Welcome to the Insurance Hot Seat, a special series by the Geek Freaks podcast dedicated to answering the tough questions in the insurance industry. The Insurance Hot Seat. Our guest this week is Bill Springer with the Conrad Insurance Agency, and today we're going to talk about the Auto Reform Act. Bill, how's it going? It's going all right, Ron. How are you? Oh, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. So, auto reform is the the new kid on the block, the new thing that's coming down the pike here. So, I guess start with what does it mean to the agency this auto reform act that's happening? Well, for the agency, what it means right now is a lot of education uh, because even though the official effect, well, the the effective date that's been advertised is July second of this year. There are parts of this bill that actually could become uh, effective immediately, depending if the insurers take a uh, take certain actions. So, on the agency end, it, it's a lot of education and trying to get that ed- education out to our insurers as well. So, right now, it's all kind of new. I mean, we've seen it in the news, right? Everybody's been stumping on it as far as uh, elections and so forth. So, from my aspect, it seems all good things but uh, you know as you kind of look underneath the the bill here there's there's some changes and those changes can have long-term effects on a lot of people in the state of Michigan what you know if you had to pick I guess the top three things that are going to be changing and that could have effects on you know users or consumers what would that be off the top well the, the first the first change is going to be the the guaranteed premium reductions on on the personal injury protection piece of of your auto policy so those are tiered uh depending and for the first time you're able to pick out your pip benefit whereas it used to be you have to buy unlimited pip coverage and pip stands for personal injury protection and unlimited uh stand it would would be just that in case someone gets injured in an auto accident Currently, as things stand now, PIP provides unlimited lifetime medical benefits to the injured party. That's going to change, but also the premium you pay is going to change, and there's guaranteed rate reduction for the next eight years on that line item on your auto policy. The second thing that's a huge change is once you start peeling back the onion on the um, on, on after the savings is – actually what the new PIP replacement's going to be. Um, previously, the personal injury protection premium funded the MCCA, the Michigan Catastrophic Casualty Association. Um, that's going to change. It's going to fund a different association, uh, and that different association is going to have a lesser benefit. And then the third thing that's going to really impact insureds especially is going to be um, the personal injury protection order of priority. And so those are the three things we see in the agency as uh, things we need to get in front of um, real quick because some of the order of uh, the PIP order of priority can be effective at any time uh, from now through July 2nd, depending on the insurer. What does the order of priority, I mean, what does that mean to the consumer? What that means is how how the personal injury protection benefits pay out, um, and currently that's that's going to change. And where it impacts people the most, at least for right now, is um, is, is if you have non-resident relatives. If you have a car titled in your name, you're paying the insurance on it, and say you have a son or daughter in their early to mid twenties who's not a student who's using that car and not living in your house, that's, that's the first, those are the first set of people we've looked at in the agency to try and get out in front of to, to educate them on what this new law is going to do for them. And, and again, that, that can be effective at any time. That's not just going to be effective July 2nd. That could be effective now. So if you're not the primary insurance holder, you're the, the secondary or, you know, the son or a daughter, that's, that's who's get, that could, that could be lessened. Uh, benefits for your for for them or for you? It could, there could be no coverage. Oh boy! If, okay, if yeah. If someone yeah. is a listed driver on their parents' policy, say a 23, 25 year old is a listed driver on their parents' policy, and they have one of the cars that's titled to the parents, and they live a couple 
you know, a couple towns over or out of state and they think they're covered. Uh, once this becomes law and effective, they're not. That PIP will not provide them coverage. Interesting. So essentially what it all, you know, so if I, if I had to look at it from the consumer side is it's going to make my son or daughter get a policy sooner than that they would traditionally. So adding more expense and all the kind of the savings that we're supposedly supposed to be seeing are still going to be coming out of our pocket, just in a different form. Absolutely. Interesting. So what does that mean for agencies, producers too? I mean, so right now, you know, if you're a personal lines agency and you're doing a lot of that volume, what does that look like as far as, you know, is you, you hit on education. So now we have to educate the consumer. So now it's a longer sales cycle. So are the producers being trained on what's going to change or is that something that, you know, we're just going to pick up on in, in language and move on down the road? Cause it, well, it's big at and least scary. I can I can speak to my agency, and I guess we we have a fear that um, come July second, we're just going to get a slew of calls with people who have questions and things of that nature. Um, what we've been trying to do here is educate the producers. We've tried to um, we've tried to 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 initiate a uh, uh, um, an email campaign to yeah. start educating our insureds. So that we start spreading this work uh, starting now rather than waiting for Jan July 2nd uh, over that time frame to at least get the questions out of the way, get a game plan for each insured that um, this may impact and, and move forward. So that way, come July 3rd, we're not wondering, you know, we're not uh, wishing that we're out of the business because it's just been nothing but requoting existing policies. Yeah. And so I imagine that's what's, that's what's going to happen, right? Is the floodgates are going to open. People are going to say, Hey, you know, you, you call your insurance agency, you could probably save some money, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be that thing again. But at, like you were just stating that there's a lot of caveats to it that I don't think we fully understand as insureds, right? Is that, Oh, my kids are in college. Uh, yeah. And, and, and I, I, we've been trying to stay on, like I said, we've been trying to stay on top of this. And one of the, Detroit Free Press had a pretty good article on Sunday, um, and, and it's not just the PIP order priority, but now uh, the, the standard uh, BI limit, bodily injury, injury limit or liability, is going to um, increase to a default of 250000 per occurrence, 500000 aggregate. Um, whereas now the state minimum is 20,000 per occurrence, 40,000 aggregate, and um, th th that's the state minimum. The standard's 100,000 per occurrence, 300,000 aggregate. So um, not only will there be questions that we need to have with our insureds as far as what they want to do with their PIP coverage, which uh, that kind of the PIP coverage itself kind of peels back the onion even more. But now you have mandatory increases in your liability coverage. You got non-resident relatives. You may have to ask some questions on. So uh, there's there's some things we've been trying to ramp up for so that we're ready for when those calls come. And we're trying to actually start um, getting some stuff out to our insurance to at least prompt them to call in so that we might have that conversation with them earlier than July. Yeah, and that's... So that's, you're doing that via email, you're reaching out phone calls, emails, you're doing, you're doing all forms of communication. Cause I'm just like smaller agencies might struggle with, you know, picking up the phone and dialing all their insureds or is it, you know, have you, have you seen anything yet that's working better for your agency, whether it's uh, email or phone calls or that kind of stuff? Well, with it, it, the, the, the law, it, it was weird because the legislator legislatures passed the law. And then they seem to have passed a bunch of talking points, and then they threw it to the Department of of, of Insurance and Financial Services to actually figure out what they passed. <laughs> so it, it's taken a while for DIFS, the Department of, of Insurance and Financial Services, to start clarifying some of these questions. And actually, a lot of them are up in the air still. So we're not we're we're, we're using an email campaign. We, we'll bring up the conversation with people we know uh, may be impacted when they call in. Um, but until we get some further clarification, um, you know, we're, those, those are the steps we've taken right now. And we're by no, no means a, a huge agency, but, um, you know, calling each insured is, is going to be tedious. And whether that's even feasible or not, I haven't figured out yet. We're trying to 
amass the uh, the email addresses and send out the uh, email alerts to at least prompt a call in, if nothing else. No, and it seems like you're because I was thinking back if anybody's reached out to me for my um, agency or any of the insurance agencies that I use for certain things, and I really haven't heard much about it. I did some research prior to talking with you, and it seems there's just that there's a lot of gray right now, and it's it's kind of scary. Uh, and I know that we're going to be having more conversations wrapped around this policy. So it's very interesting. It's the same thing. They have a data protection act that's getting pushed out in 2023 that has really no changes in it besides limits, uh, for what they put out a couple of years ago. So it's, it's just interesting to see kind of how the government is pushing out policies. You know, you don't really know until you, you know, until you need to know, but unfortunately for some well, people, it's going to be it, too late. Yeah, and, and it's getting even dicier because with that um, change in the order of PIP priority, uh, you know, that, that is now changing uh, funds from the MCCA to the MACP, and uh, the MACP doesn't have a funding mechanism currently until after the law passes in July. So now the uh, Michigan Auto Placement Facility is suing Department of Information, Financial Insurance, and Financial Services to to stop uh, the immediate implementation of the PIP order priority. And I haven't heard where that's ended up, but you know we have the state suing the state on this thing. It's it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, and that's usually how it goes, right? Is it, it, it we we pass it because it seems good and we get all behind it, but then there's all this infighting and just gray, nasty area that we have to sift through and. I wouldn't be surprised if nothing really shakes out until that day, right? Is that oh, we got to have an answer? I, for this. I would, I would agree, and and I mean the talking points that were passed, everybody can get behind. I mean, who doesn't want to pay less for their auto insurance on face value? But then when you start digging down and you find out uh, the actual benefit changes that are going to impact people, whereas you know on the MCCA you have unlimited uh you know medical co- medical benefits for life and that includes you know it that includes adjusting ramps and walkways for people who are who are uh, who are physically disabled and unable to take advantage of them attendant care that that now has to be afforded into the MACP's $250,000 max which not a whole lot's left over for that health insurance won't pick that up so now you have to have the conversation on what type of coverage you really, really want with the insured because, you know, every if you take a lesser PIP um, selection, most of the carriers I'm speaking to will at least offer a uh, an attendant care endorsement, but it's still something that you're going to have to ask people to make sure they're aware that that uh, this is this this is op- this is an option that can be covered. And then, uh, then the E and O issues arise thereafter too. If you're not on top of it, so right now, if I'm in an automobile accident, I get um, hurt. I need assistance for the rest of my life. I'm covered. I'm taken care of by the plan as as it is. Going forward, Correct. after July, um, I will I will be able to use as much as I have until the two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Once that's up, it's up. It's you're you're on your own. You got to figure it out. Right. And then that's where the insurers, so the insurance companies will then have riders or amendments or whatever the case is to have other plans in place. So you you could then spend more money to get that attended care coverage or, you know, whatever else the coverage may be. So, yeah, it looks great on paper that we're going to be saving money, but in the long term, we might be still, you know, we might have more that we have to pay out. Yeah, and, and, and we did some dummy mock-ups on um, – on some of the uh, some of some of our people in the uh, in in the agency to see what would what would happen with a lesser PIP selection, and uh, we had one person who chose the half million dollar PIP limit rather than unlimited, and I think uh, it turned out that it was only about one hundred and ninety dollars savings over the course of the year by choosing that option. Yeah, that's uh, it's not a lot for you know unlimited or whatever five hundred thousand dollar. Right, right. That that's kind of what uh, we, what we came up with. So, um, you know, it's 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 been it's been an interesting process as far as trying to educate our our you know everybody in the agency and then getting this out to our insurance. I like I like the process though, right? I like the thought of okay, we need to train internally. We need to say this is what we're doing. This is our stance as an agency. You know, we don't want to have lower limits, whatever the case is. You want to work with everybody individually, but then 
to try to educate everybody, if you, whether it's email, maybe it's a hard copy, maybe it's every time they call in, they can speak to their producer and kind of have that conversation. I think you guys are doing it right. Uh, I, I'm hopefully that other agencies will pick up on, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's essentially education at some level. It's not really a change to the agency per se. It's a change to how we're going to educate. Yeah, without question. And, and I know a lot of people, I, I, I don't know anybody in the agency who's not dreading July 3rd. Oh, that phone's going to be ringing. Yeah, there's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's going to be one that, uh, you know, we we've talked about uh, hiring, you know, maybe someone as as an intern or something along those lines to at least take some of the work that we might otherwise be free to do, uh, put it on them. So now we've got the, the our licensed agents available to at least answer questions. So the the, the staffing is the staffing issue is one of those that we've had early conversations with as well. And that is the third, which is a Friday, and then we're cl- <laughs> then the Independence Day. So yeah, you're gonna have a lot of closures, a lot of people very uh, concerned, right? Is Saturday? That's I think the third's a Friday. Yeah, Saturday's the fourth. Oof, it's gonna be a busy Monday. Right, right. Well, I mean, even the if you know, I haven't looked at the calendar, but if the third's a Friday and Saturday's the fourth, it might be that we're closed that Friday. The only benefit is on something like this, these changes for most people aren't going to take effect until renewal. Oh although, yeah, that's a good point. Although, um, you know, you'll, you'll always get the people and we'll probably get a slew of them who'll call in July 2nd hearing that they can get lower car insurance and want to change. So that that's that's where a lot of the work's probably going to come in that first week. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I don't envy that position on uh, the day before a holiday, right? It's, it's going to be a tough one. <laughs> Oh yeah. Bill, I appreciate it. It's been very educational for someone that only knew a little bit about it. Um, I'm excited to see how agencies handle this uh, unique situation. It doesn't happen very much. So I'm excited to see how everybody starts training and educating everybody. That's very uh, exciting for me. I know it's tough for the agency owners and principals, but we'll get there. Well, it's, it's, I I wouldn't call it exciting. It's, 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 something that needs to be done one one all one curious thing that i found too that that i just wanted to mention is the motorcycle pip order priority has not changed the legislature did not decide to change that so um right now and after july 2nd if you're involved in an accident with a motorcycle that pip claim actually goes on the vehicle operators coverage it does not go on. It goes on to the it, even if even if the motorcyclist is at fault, uh, it goes on to the motor vehicle that was involved in the accident. That that has not changed, which kind of shocked me. So if I'm in my car and I hit a guy, there's an accident with a motorcycle. My insurance, no matter what, is picking up the motorcyclist. If you're in your car and you're driving, and a motorcyclist that is drunk runs a red light and T-bones you, it goes on your policy. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. Interesting. I, it, so they just, don't, it, they just don't want to address it? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not sure why, but, but that, that's, that's been the way. And when we went through this PIP order priority educationally, it kind of opened my eyes to it. But, um, you know, I, I guess they decided that it was – in whatever for whatever reason they weren't going to change that that's crazy uh, again that's that more of that gray area right as you sift through and as users and everybody sifts through what's happening there's going to probably be more stuff that we pull out that's like well oh, that doesn't really make sense but they they put it in so we got to figure right. it out yep yep absolutely right well bill i appreciate it uh thank you so much for your time today um very exciting to learn about auto reform i know a lot of people don't know much about it because it's just been in the news as a really good thing so it's always interesting to kind of hear the other side of it and how it's going to affect everything i appreciate it um yeah and we'll talk to you soon bill all right thanks thanks buddy Bye -bye. bye bye